Hello friends, it's Candice and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I figured we could talk about my conch holes. I don't know how long awaited it is, but I feel like I've had my YouTube channel long enough and this is a pretty heavy mod that I feel like I maybe should have talked about it by now. I don't know, I did my coin slots, but I feel like those are more of a like catch your attention term that people know about. Uh, a lot of people interested in piercings on YouTube might actually know about like conch punches slash like stretch conches, big conches from Quickened, who is more of a tattoo creator. But when I discovered her, um, it was through mostly her piercing stuff mixed with the tattoo stuff. You know, I like both. <laughs> Uh, to start off, the reason I ever originally wanted the conches was basically from Quicken's videos. Uh, before her videos about her conches or anything like that, which I know she's like retiring them, like I think, I don't know if she wants to get them sewn shut, I don't know the deal. But either way, <laughs> tangents, tangents, uh, it was her videos that inspired me, like watching her videos, seeing the holes, like seeing through them. I just thought it was so cool. I thought it looked so cool. And uh, once I started getting into piercings and like body mods and stuff, I guess like the conches were my first like body mod, like heavier mod. Because I guess technically tattoos and piercings are all body mod. You're modifying your body. Seeing her videos about like the conch holes was like, something that I could wrap my head around that I thought was really cool and awesome. And I really wanted one for myself. Like, you know, you all see those elf pointing, ear pointing type things. You see like tongue split videos sometimes. Uh, but I w never really like, I, as much as I'm interested in the body mod of it, I was never really interested in actually getting my tongue split or getting my ears pointed. But the controls, I was like, this is cool, and I wanted it. So that's the basic, like, thing for why I got it done. I thought it was cool, and I was like, this will just be awesome. I'm hardcore, whatever. So I guess I can just tell the whole story. So I think what happened was, I don't remember that specifically. I think I got them done in 2017, so it's been like five years now. How crazy is that? Is that right? The The earliest I got it done was 2018, but I think it was 2017 when I got them, which is wild. Oh, my ear holes. Okay, sorry. I didn't realize how long ago that was. Oh my gosh. So it was after I had already gotten into piercings a little bit, like I had four or five like newer ones like this is after I started diving into actual body piercing instead of like my original like helix piercing and like lobe piercings and my belly button this is after I started actually like obsessing over piercings and stuff like that but before the gold came along before the gold and basically I thought they were cool and I asked a piercer at my tattoo shop what that's not right at all. I asked one of the piercers who was piercing me at the time at a piercing place about getting my conscious, I think, punched to a two gauge. I just asked about it. And it just so happened that this piercer actually did body mods. Now, if you're curious about body mods at all, uh, piercers are not body mod artists. So if you're looking to get a body mod done, uh, asking your piercer might be a good place to start. They might know someone, but just because you're a piercer doesn't mean you're doing like heavier body mods, if that makes sense. Like you still want to check people's portfolio for like body modification. You don't want to just be like, they're a good piercer. I'll get my body mod done by them because there's people who are playing around with stuff that they have no experience in, no training in. So just a warning, if you're getting any heavy body mods, it's kind of an extreme thing. Make sure you're doing your research. Make sure the person knows what they're doing, that they've done it before, all that stuff. Don't just let some piercer who thinks they know what they're doing or who you, who tell, who tells you that they know what they're doing. Don't just let anyone cut chunks of your body out. 
it's kind of a serious thing no matter how it's perceived. Now, if it was a punch, I think piercers sometimes do punches. It's a little bit more similar to a piercing and piercers also may do large gauge, large gauge piercings. But in general, uh, what I'm talking about, what happened to me in this video, is not for just any old piercer to do. So don't let any old piercer do this to you. Do your research. Be safe. It's it's dangerous, basically. It's dangerous to get body mods. It, it's dangerous to get a lot of body mods. Just the nature of it. It's dangerous. Fair warning. I probably should have said things like that in my coin slot videos, but I don't know. I, I just want to make sure it's out there. Be careful what you're doing to your body. You want to make sure people are taking care of you. Anyway, on and on about warnings. Back to asking the piercer about getting my conscious punched. Uh, so if, if you don't know what a conch punch is or a punch is in general, picture a hole punch. Uh, you cut holes in paper and it cuts the flesh of the paper. It cuts a circle out of the paper. Basically, a punch is a little um, scalpel in the shape of a circle that literally basically hole punches a piece of tissue out of wherever you're punching. So you could punch your lobes, uh, which isn't, that's another video, Pun getting your lobes punched, that's a whole nother video. If you want that, let me know in the comments below. I can do a little more research on that. Obviously, I haven't had that done, but I do know a little bit. I'm not going to go too much into it. Uh, you can punch your lobes, you can punch your flat, you can punch your conch. Um, you can punch a lot of things. You can punch your nostrils. Some things get kind of outrageous, but um, punching is basically a quick way to get to a very large gauge without having to stretch or pierce it at a very large gauge. When I asked the piercer about getting my conscious to a large size like that, uh, he basically said, I don't really recommend punching because uh, doing a punch can actually cause a lot of excess scar tissue. Uh, and that's because if you picture a piercing, for instance, a piercing, a cartilage piercing of any sort can at times take nine to 12 months to heal. Like between six and 12 months is like a decent range. Basically, it's a very extended and long healing process. So when you, when you punch cartilage, it still takes that long to heal. So if you punch like a little hole cut out and put a glass plug in, which glass plugs are probably the most ideal thing to heal with in that scenario, as far as I'm aware, as far as I've seen anywhere on the internet from actual piercers, uh, basically healing around that is basically healing the same way a piercing would heal. And just like any other piercing, you can get scarring, like how you get the irritation bumps, hypertrophic scarring, keloids, all of that are the same risks, but with a punch, the surface area is much greater so there's a lot more likely so my impression what from him was that it's a lot more likely that something like that could go wrong where there's just an overgrowth of scar tissue even if it doesn't seem like too much it can just sometimes be bad another thing he mentioned about punching it at such a large size is that if you ever take the jewelry out sometimes the hole can kind of shrink up because the scar like because the scarring is kind of like any other piercing where like as soon as the jewelry is out it'll kind of want to close up and like heal especially depending on how healed it is so that's kind of why he told me it's not really advised or he wouldn't advise punching at such a large size now if you talk to your piercer and they say something different just have an informed and educated conversation ask them actual questions make sure they know what they're talking about if they have experience pierce piercing or punching large gauge cartilage stuff just ask them about it they might have a different answer than the piercer that i went to but this piercer did not recommend getting a punch and he actually recommended something that he uh, has done a lot before, I guess. Like he learned from, I think he said he learned from Luna Cobra. I'm sure people into body mods. I think that's the right person. Some, someone in Australia. 
he said he kind of learned under this big body mod artist and worked with him for many years and what he actually recommended to me was to get it cut and sutured which if you don't know what that is uh, the piercer could basically either use a punch or use just a regular scalpel uh, they cut a hole out of your ear and then they sew it closed like they stitch the seams just like in my coin slot video how I kind of explained how that went so yeah basically they cut a hole however way it could be a punch it could be a scalpel however they choose to do it but the biggest difference is you don't heal with the jewelry in uh, you heal with stitches so it's being stitched closed and then instead of taking six to 12 months to fully heal like a piercing would it's healed more like any other wound with stitches if that makes sense so if you got a cut like if you got a big gash on your arm and you got stitches it takes like I mean I haven't had like cuts that needed stitches so let me know in the comments below if my logic is flawed but as far as I'm aware like any other like cut stitched closed kind of cut on your body it's probably gonna take one to two weeks to heal to the point where you can remove the stitches depending on how deep it is I'm assuming I don't know um, but so basically the conch is the same way so instead of taking up to a year to heal sometimes more uh, basically the stitches will be able to come out in about two weeks or so and then you'll have a perfectly healed hole in your ear it kind of takes like a little bit longer than the two week mark to like really settle down it takes about like it takes a few months I think for it to really settle down and like relax and then the scar tissue is like kind of not so raw and fresh yes so he sold me on that when he told me about this cut and suture I was like this is crazy I did a little bit of research okay it wasn't really that crazy obviously I did it maybe I'm a little crazy <laughs> he sold me on it obviously I'm a lazy bum this is why I got coin slots this is why I got the conch hold because I'm too lazy to heal so I wanted like helix piercings going all the way up and I'm like dang like that's gonna take so long to heal like each individual one takes so long and the more you get the longer it takes to heal if you get it too much at a time oh just the, not my not my situation I, I'm too lazy for this so that's why I got the conscious done and my coin slots at the end of the day, like a year and a two years later, was because uh, the stitches would be out in two weeks and then in a month I could start wearing plugs or just have a hole in my ear. And at that point I wouldn't have to worry about it shrinking down or anything because if you can imagine, because if you can imagine the cartilage was cut out and the skin was sewn closed and once your skin is sewn in a certain way with whatever it's not really gonna shrink back up like that's how it healed it healed with nothing in it so it's able to stay perfectly open at that size does that make sense so if it was a punch with the jewelry in it then the tissue I guess is always like kind of pushing around like being held in by that piece of jewelry so once the jewelry is out it might like kind of shrink up but that's not going to happen with mine. It's not possible. The tissue was fully removed and it was fully sealed at this shape. So I was sold on it. I emailed back and forth with the piercer a couple times. And at the same time, I think I mentioned it in my 4 gauge septum video, which um, may not be a very great video, but I'll try to remember to link it up there if I can. If not, definitely let me know in the comments below. <laughs> And I'll try my best to link it for you but it's just all about my four gauge septum piercing which uh, let me know if you want me to redo that video because I'm kind of I don't know I, I'm probably the same in this video but I feel like I've been explaining a lot like dang anyway <laughs> I emailed back and forth with the piercer about my conches especially but I also wanted my septum done on the same day or he was willing to do it on the same day and I was down to just get things over with whatever um, so basically I guess we can go into the process I show up to the appointment I'm there uh, kind of similar to the coin slot experience where you can check those videos out too I'll leave them linked up up above in the I cards as well if I remember I'm sure I'll be like oh these are related so I'm sure it'll be there I don't know um, where 
Uh, but this was my first experience with something like that. So I show up, like I'm all awkward. Um, he's getting all up in my grill. Actually, the first one was my right side. And I I'm not exactly sure who, what, where, when, why about it. But with this ear, he used like a regular scalpel, I think. And with this ear, he used like an actual punch. Like an actual punch. So I wanted a two gauge. No, wait. I think I wanted a two gauge, but he said he couldn't do smaller than 10 millimeter, I believe, which is double zero. He at least said he couldn't do smaller than a zero gauge. I don't really remember anymore, but he said he couldn't do it as small as I wanted. Now I've seen other body mod artists since, and I think some body mod artists, maybe they do it a lot more frequently. I don't know the deal. I think I've seen some body mod artists do a cut and suture a little bit smaller than I've gotten mine. So definitely do your research on that. See if it's possible. I don't, I honestly haven't looked into it. So I don't know if it really is possible, but I think I've seen things smaller than like zero gauge or 10 millimeters. So definitely do your research. This is something you really want to do your research beforehand. But I was kind of like, I was already down with pretty big holes. I'm down for the big holes, whatever. So since this side, I could probably show pictures. I'm probably sure I have them on the screen already. Uh, with my right side, since it was cut with a scalpel, he said he was kind of cutting it to an oval shape and then once you put jewelry in it, it'll kind of open up a little bit more circular. I don't, I don't really remember that much. Since this side was done with a scalpel, it was more ovular. It took a really long time and it was really uncomfortable. It was getting really like it wasn't getting really painful towards the end, but it was getting painful a little bit towards the end. Like the beginning was painless, just like my con just my just like my coin slots were pretty painless, just like a dental procedure would be, like if you got a filling or something. Uh, just exactly the same as that. But um, uh, since it took so long, I guess it started getting sore. If that makes sense. Uh, but he sewed that one closed and then he went on to this side and I don't know if it was getting late in the day. I honestly don't really remember, but then he, I think he just took a punch with this side and he basically just like pierced it, like just like a piercing and then sewed it closed. So if you actually look at my controls together, my left side is probably like two or three millimeters bigger than my right side. And I can actually pull, um, I think I can pull... As long as the flare's not too big, I think I can pull a 10 millimeter plug straight through my ear, to be honest. Um, and that's without these rings. I have a few rings like stacked like through my conch hole right now. Um, but I can at least still get a zero gauge through there, even with the rings. My nose is itchy. Uh, but this side, um, I think a zero gauge fits almost perfectly. I think a zero gauge at this point is a little bit loose which is okay um I think it's a little bit loose because as it heals over time it kind of like settles down like any inflammation kind of goes away and it kind of like sucks in like your skin kind of like goes against the cartilage if that makes sense it's not so like inflamed and puffy it kind of just like wraps around like a like a freezer wrap maybe not so extreme but so, something like that it settles down and it kind of gets bigger because right when I first got this done uh, 10 millimeter hurt to put in like at, like a month or so later it hurt to put in at first so it was definitely a little bit tighter at first when it was like still freshly healed um, and then I remember during the procedure like I remember blood leaking down like down my neck and it was like in my hair I have the shirt still it the shirts from my high school so I don't want to throw it out because I can't really get a replacement so it has a little blood stain on it it's like right on the back like top of my shoulder here and it's just kind of like light brown now it's kind of gross maybe you don't need to know about my blood stains so basically if you're getting any body mods maybe don't wear shirts that you really love because you know things could get messy there's blood happening even a piercing, like maybe don't wear something that you really love because, you know, anything could go wrong. <laughs> Even if it doesn't go wrong, like a, a stray blood drop could ruin a shirt. So be aware for that. 
but beyond that, I think it was only this side that leaked the blood. This side might have done it a little bit too, but this side was a lot faster and more, um, not really traumatic emotionally, but like, I think traumatic to the tissue. It just like happened a lot quicker instead of like gently and slowly, but whatever. Uh, after that was done, it was also stitched closed. Um, and then I... I think I went to school and to work the next day. At the time I worked at the grocery store, so I was just like walking around, showing people. And then bear in mind, this was my first experience with the, like an extreme body mod. Like I said, this side was a little bit more sore since it like went faster, I guess. So this side started like swelling up a little bit. All right, I'm skipping ahead, I'm skipping ahead. When I got home from the piercing shop right after I like it was done I got my septum done and my conches I went home I literally just started crying <laughs> I was like I think I was just exhausted I think I had work later that night but I was just exhausted like oh that was a lot it's a lot body mods are a lot to deal with um, there they are extreme even something like little like just a little ear hole they're extreme. Someone cut a chunk out of my body that I can never get back. So, uh, it's definitely a big deal. So I got home and I was just like, I was worn out, especially like since it was, took so long and it started getting like sore even during the procedure. And I was just like, I was tired. It was, it was draining, but I made it through. It's all fine. Uh, but I will say when I started crying, I think it made the blood rush to like my face and my ears. So it started to like bleed like right after I got it done. So that was great. So it was pretty bloody. Now, if you don't know about like body mods like this, you don't want to get a lot of blood built up in there because the scabs will kind of like close and like compact in the hole, which can be a pain, like really uncomfortable for healing and just uncomfortable in general because... If you ever had a scab or anything like that, they, those are some sharp shards. They are hard. They're not comfortable to, like, have around. You want to, like, keep the stitches pretty clear. So it got pretty bloody. Like I said, I was going to work and stuff. My left ear got a little bit sore. I don't even know if I have pictures. I'll try to find some if I can. And I was worried I was infected. Like, I get really paranoid sometimes. I get anxiety and this was like a new experience for me and I thought I was infected and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to die. Oh my gosh. Which, you know, potentially is a real possibility. So better safe than sorry if you're ever concerned, but I probably should have emailed the body mod artist for him to be like, oh, that's normal. But I didn't. I just went to my doctor. I got antibiotics, which apparently is a huge no-no because then I told, uh, and that was about a week into the healing because it was like sore and stuff. The doctor was just like, oh yeah, your ear looks swollen. Meanwhile, my ears are just different shapes. It was a little swollen, but like, I just got a hole cut out of it. Like a regular piercing would have caused my ear to swell. But the doctor didn't do any like cultures or anything to see if it really was infected. She was just judgmental. This was not my regular doctor either. I don't know if my regular doctor would have been better, but... Um, basically, she was kind of judgmental. She was like, oh yeah, you're technical term for outer part of your ear. I don't remember it right this second. Uh, she's like, oh yeah, if you look, that's swollen. I'm like, literally, like, this ear is round, this ear is flat, like, it's, it already sticks out farther than my right ear, so you can't really compare. It, I don't think, it was swollen, but I don't think it was, like, that swollen. I guess I did, because I went to ask, but they prescribed me antibiotics. I started taking them. I told the body mod artist, like, hey, like, I'm just, I started taking antibiotics. He was like, why would you do that without asking me or telling me, like, you can't take antibiotics with stitches in, which I don't know how true that is. I honestly have no idea. I'm not a doctor or a body mod artist. I don't, I don't know. But apparently antibiotics try to heal things and try to get rid of things so it'll be, may, It'll make it more likely that your stitches will reject. At least this is what the body mount artist told me. Um, so in that case, it could cause extra scarring. If you think of a rejecting piercing, it leaves a scar trail behind. Apparently a similar thing would happen to stitches if they're being pushed out because of the antibiotics. 
it'll leave excess scarring behind. So he was just like, come in as soon as you can. So I had my stitches taken out a few days before they were ready to be taken out. So they were still a little bloody and sore when it was taken out. And I don't know if that's why this ear is a little bit, um, why, like if it, was a little bit wider because the stitches weren't in the whole time it needed so maybe it like relaxed the, the tension on the skin to like keep it closed so maybe it like opened up I don't really know but when I got the stitches out I think this ear it wasn't as sore this ear was like pretty good it was a little bit more sore than like when my co when my coin slots were taken out when my coin slots were taken out it was like basically fully healed and the stitches were just annoying at that point. I had already had the experience of my conches, so I kind of knew what to go off of a little bit more. When I had them taken out, it was a little bit more, it was a little bit too early because of the antibiotics and the body mod artist wanted me, didn't want to leave the stitches in to cause excess scarring. So apparently like he looked at them and thought they were good enough to take them out a little bit early. So he took them out for me. This one, it was still sore, but it wasn't so bad. And there was like huge chunks of scabs in there too. It was just a bad ordeal. And, and then especially this ear, it was a little bit more trauma. It was a little bit bloodier. I'm not really sure why. I don't, like I had my hypotheses I already told you, I think. But this ear was a little bit, it wasn't like open, like my skin was an open wound it, well, I guess it was an open wound, but it wasn't like a gaping wound or anything, but it was a little bit more open after the stitches were taken out and it did get a little bit bloody, I think, after the stitches were taken out. So this one took a little bit longer to heal because of all that. Mistakes on my part. I don't, I don't know. What can you do? And, and I think after that, uh, he said, uh, to come back after like maybe about a month or so and maybe we could put in jewelry. I'd, I'm not really sure if I can remember, but uh, so I went back at about a month and I'm not sure. I think I went back at about a month and he said, okay, maybe we'll wait a little bit longer. It was like in the winter. He wanted to check them out. He's like, they're looking okay. Uh, I want to wait a little bit longer into the winter to make sure they like have time to settle down like I was talking about a little bit earlier in the video settle down and they'll like relax a little bit and I was like okay so I came back I don't know when but I came back and I was just like I'm here to see body mod artist which was just one of the piercers and they were like oh he doesn't work here anymore and then I was like what I'm like I don't know I don't know I was like I don't know where he went like I wish he would have told me like I felt, I mean, it wasn't that big of a deal. Like, I'm a big girl, I guess. I probably didn't need him specifically to put jewelry in my conches. But, like, I felt lost. I was scared. I was a baby. A baby body mod person. And I was, like, going back and forth with him. So, it was just kind of weird and random. I'm not really sure what happened. But I think he's doing okay now. <laughs> my camera timed out. It went past 30 minutes because I just keep blabbering. Anyway, I'll try to finish it up. So basically, I had to go to one of the other piercers there. They helped me put in jewelry. Basically, they helped me put in jewelry. It was really sore. Uh, I was saying how um, these holes, these piercings, I don't really call them piercings. They're more like body mods to me. They're not really piercings because piercings are like not basic, but they're like sim more simple. They're not as like heavy, they're not as extreme, but basically these were sore for a long time and I think it's just because of like all the cartilage work, just like if you got a nose job, I haven't gotten a nose job obviously, but if you got a nose job, uh, it would be healed in, I, I don't know the actual timeline, but like I would think in one to three months. Like, there's a couple stages, I think, but in one to three months, it would be healed. Like, no more stitches, no more splints, or whatever. I know they're probably not called splints for your nose. I, they're, they must be called something else. They could be. I don't know. But no more of that. It's just left to be, and that's your nose. But 
thing is, cartilage, even with your nose, same with your ears, it takes longer than that to heal. So, like, a good plastic surgeon would, a good plastic surgeon would be like, you're not going to see full results for, like, a year or sometimes maybe even a little bit more than a year. But it will take, from what I've seen from botched, <laughs> this is my knowledge of plastic surgery, but from what I've seen is it takes at least a year. It's going to take the full year to, like, fully settle down, like all the swelling, like there's internal swelling, all that's going to take time. Cartilage takes time to heal no matter where it is. Even if your helix piercing fully heals in like three months, there's still going to be internal like healing going on. So it was sensitive. It was, it, it took at least a year for me to be like, okay, these are just my ears now. They're not sore at all. They're not sore at all anymore. But they used to be like sore, like I wasn't able to like lay on either ear. I was not able to lay on either ear, piercings or not, like fresh piercings or not. I was just not able to because it was sore. And even, it's funny, I was telling my uh, piercer about this recently. This is a different piercer, obviously the other one left me. <laughs> but... I was talking to my piercer about it recently, how, like, before I got my conscious, I used to, I'm so weird, but, like, I used to, like, go like this to my ears and, like, just crack my ears, like, how you crack your knuckles, but I would literally just go like this, like, throughout the day, like, constantly, all day long, not, like, all day, but, like, you know, like, every couple hours, I'd probably go like this to crack my ears, but after getting those conscious done, it, I could not do that. <laughs> Especially when the stitches were in and it was that sore, but even then I couldn't I couldn't even attempt to do that Like a year out like it was still like too sore like I didn't want to like bend it like I couldn't I probably could now but now I got a lot more piercings that would not agree with that and I've broken the habit I'm not really trying to get back into the habit Also now that there's less cartilage I'm like I don't know what part was actually making the crunching noise before when I cracked my ears so, may, maybe, um, maybe that part's gone. Maybe it wouldn't even crunch if I could. But, so, it was kind of good because it broke me of that habit, which I, I didn't mind. It was satisfying to crunch my ears, but it probably looked weird, like, walking around the world, just going like this, like, every once in a while, like, I don't know. I, I'm just kind of weird. Either way, I guess I'll just, like, do what I do now, and ever since I first tried on jewelry for that, I bought a couple plugs over, like, the course of, like, the year or so after, maybe, like, a couple years after I got them done. I bought a few plugs. A lot of them were a little bit too small. I couldn't wear the same size. I could, but, like, one would be looser. Uh, and then I just found that, like, dead skin cells would build up like it was just a lot more high maintenance like I like my jewelry now because I don't really have to like f take them out and clean them every day I can just leave it clean it like on a surface level and go with my day I'm not really like someone to like oh I love changing jewelry I mean at this point but I'm not really someone to like change my earrings for the day so like plugs and changing plugs was not for me and to be honest, I really got the conscious not really to wear plugs. I just really loved the holes. Like I said, watching Quicken's videos, like staring at her beautiful holes. Woo. That that was that was it. And I'm like, I love the holes. And especially now that I have these like higher piercings in here and I got these rings in here that gives me like an orbital. I think it's so cool and unique and I love my hole. And like people don't really notice them that much. But when they do, I just go ahead and stick a pinky in there. And it's super fun times. Well, not super fun. But let me stick a pencil in there for you guys. I don't think I can even stick a pencil in the other one. Well, my... Well, to be honest, my doth piercing's in the way at the moment. So the jewelry might get in the way. But this hole is... Oh, oh no, no, no. The hole is just smaller. This pe this pencil might be bigger. The hole's smaller, so I can stick a pencil through this side. 
but I, I don't even think I can get a pencil in here, doth or not. I think the hole is just not like round enough or big enough. And I'm not trying to shove things that aren't fitting right in my ear holes and getting them stuck. That sounds like scary. But that's okay, because this is my more accessible ear anyway. And I feel like this ear, it's a lot easier for it to be bigger, because this ear is a little bit bigger and more open anyway. And usually my hair is on this side, so it covers that side anyway. I don't know. Uh, I like them. At one point, I think I tried to go to the person who did my coin slots to be like, hey, can you make this one a little bit bigger? But then after my coin slot, I was like, you know what? Whatever. <laughs> And maybe in the future I'll try to get this one bigger, but like I said, my ears are different shapes. So I feel like the small one kind of fits with this ear because it is a little bit more like, I don't need the pencils anymore. It's a little bit more like folded and this one's more open. So they kind of work and I'm not too mad about it anymore. Like at first I was like, dang, they're not even the same size, I guess because of the different techniques that was used. But regardless... I'm happy with it. I love having my ear holes and I don't need to put a pinky through both ears to show someone that I got holes in my ears. You know what I mean? Like I could still put rings through it and through my piercings and have like cool orbitals and stuff. So we're good. We're chilling. I still got my holes and I love them. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, let me know. Would you ever get something like this done? Have you done research on it? Uh, what's your opinion on things like this? If you have any questions about body mods at all any body mod I have done research into other body mods so if you have any questions about anything definitely let me know in the comments below um I, I think I got everything down in these topics definitely check out my coin slot videos uh and comment below anything you want like if you have a question I might reply like that or I might make a video about it so definitely comment definitely give your thoughts and opinions uh, would you ever get something like this done? I think I said that already. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I would really appreciate that. I'm really trying to grow my channel. Uh, I love talking about body mods, piercings, tattoos, all that stuff. Especially piercings because I love jewelry and I love looking at jewelry. So that's my jam. And hmm, let's see. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. You can send me links to anything piercing related on Instagram if you want me to react to it. You can send me pictures of your ears if you want me to curate it. I have a whole series of me curating my subscribers' ears that I gotta do more of. I've been thinking about doing like a week straight of curating ears because I am so backlogged. And thank you anyone who's sent ears. And I'm sorry I haven't gotten to you yet. But I love you and thank you for your patience if you're still waiting. And just thanks for submitting them if you were ever interested, you know what I mean? Uh, and don't forget to follow my tattoo Instagram, which is also linked in the description. I am a tattoo apprentice, and I am learning still, but I am tattooing, so definitely check that out. I do have a couple videos coming up. We'll see if I can edit them to look good. I'm not really talking that much during them because I'm focusing on tattooing, but I got a video of me doing my first tattoo on myself, and then my 10th tattoo that I've ever done on a on a human skin which is also on myself uh, which is in a really awkward angle so if you want to see me tattoo myself it might not be that fun well I think it'll be fun but it's just me like tattooing myself I try to make it interesting but uh, let me know if you want to see those um, or just let, let me know let me know what else you want to see I love you guys thank you guys so much for watching this video Oh, I can't say I love you twice in a row. Whatever. I love you guys. See you in the next one. Bye. Oh. Dang. I always film these way too late. It's like almost four in the morning. But that's okay. Because this is my life. Oh.